morning, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to invite you to a small journey in the realm of female aesthetic surgery. On the way, we will ask some simple yet very important questions uh, towards the most common procedures right now in aesthetic surgery to improve the uh, successfulness and impact on women's life. First, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Michael Andrew Gatesy. I work at the Samovas University Obstetrics and Gynecology Clinic. My supervisors are Sabo Chwarbiro and Leventa Shara, and my SMS is Fondi Mesnerich. My mission would be, of course, to aim for perfection in aesthetic surgery, and my vision is to find the best methods and which allow the best functional and aesthetical outcome. Well, we surely know that there is a long way ahead of us and a lot of questions to ask, but first we wanted to uh, investigate uh, one of the most progressive uh, intervention in plastic surgery, which is labiaplasty. And secondly, we wanted to ask some questions uh, in the realm of breast surgery, which is by all means the most desired ones. Uh, we started our first project in September in which we are investigating the effect of female genital beautification on patient reported outcomes. The weapon of choice this time is a systematic review and meta-analysis. But what is exactly this female beautification concept? Well, a lot of women are not really pleased with the size or the looks of the outer genitalia, so they want it to be modified. Not so long ago, these kind of operations consisted only like a simple resection of the labia minora. However, in the last decade, it really outgrew itself and became a complex varieties of interventions. And this is what we call today the female beautification compact, com uh, concept. Nowadays, this consists of many conventional techniques and we can also experience almost every year some new techniques to arrive, which allegedly, of course, have some advantage compared to the old ones. Uh, in our research, we concentrate mostly on labia minora and majoroplasty. Uh, but let's cut to the chase. Every intervention has the same purpose, which is to alter the outer female genitalia to a better looking, functioning, and more satisfactory result, of course. What really highlights the importance of this topic is that in the last decade, the demand for this kind of operation just skyrocketed, and the demand is just growing year for year. Uh, with, the emerging, with the emerging demand, of course, the, uh, with the emerging demand, uh, of course, the available uh, techniques are growing too. And uh, we can safely say that labia minora and majoroplasty are very safe procedures with mostly a very high satisfaction rate. But are we pleased in this field with this, such kind of words that high and mostly? Not at all, of course. We aim for perfection. So with such, in, such intention, we would like to compare the patient reported outcomes of all techniques to in genital beautification and rejuvenation. Uh, our question naturally derives from our goal, which is the most satisfactory and perfect method or methods used in this concept? Uh, we mainly concentrate on women who underwent these kind of operations. We want to compare all kinds of all techniques of labiaplasty, major and minoroplasty, but of course we want to concentrate mostly on the newly emerged ones. Our uh, outcome, our primary goal would be to see uh, 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 complications like dehiscence, hematum, and uh, 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 bleeding, and so on, only secondary to patient satisfaction. And uh, what might we might learn at the end of the day that these newly emerged techniques of labiaplasty, which we saw in the uh, last few years, are superior than conventional techniques. So we will test and compare new and old methods. We conducted our search in three databases uh, with satisfactory results with the search key below. And running down the rabbit hole, at the end of the day, we found ourselves with 55 rewarding texts, uh, which look uh, uh, good enough to fulfill our purpose. Uh, with a little holdup in the beginning, now we are advancing unstoppably to be able to hand over the beautiful full text this upcoming spring. 
And with this, allow me to resettle to my second topic, which will investigate the impact of aesthetic breast surgery on lactation. Well, by all means, aesthetic breast surgery is the most desired uh, plastic operations worldwide. Year for year, almost one in a, or around one and a half million women seek for these kind of operations, and mostly uh, these women are in the fertile age, uh, averagely around 33 years. What does it mean? That means that augmentation a lot of times inter interferes, inter uh, intercepts uh, with, uh, with family planning. And nowadays, we well know that breastfeeding is, gains its importance not only because of the transporting some important nutrients, but also because it plays a very, very important role in some other physical and psychological development. Well, unwittingly, but sometimes during the operations of augmentation, we can destroy uh, uh, nerves and glands of the, of the breasts, which actually raises a very, very important question. Because I don't really know about you, but I want to live in a world with beautiful breasts and healthy children. Which, of course, raises a very, very fearful question. Do aesthetic breast uh, operations impair the ability or quality of breastfeeding? Well, in our research, we want to concentrate on lactating women, and we want to compare every different types of aesthetic breast surgery. Uh, and of course, compare it uh, with a control group who didn't underwent such kind of operation. Uh, in the outcome, we will look at the change in breastfeeding rate and length. Our hypothesis is a bit complex. First of all, we want to see that aesthetic surgery at all uh, has, if, if aesthetic surgery at all has impact on breastfeeding, on length and rate. And, and secondly, we want to find some method between all different types of aesthetic surgery which maybe has lesser impact on, uh, 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 on breastfeeding. And we think, of course, on allograft transplantation now, which is one of the newest and most uh, uh, progressive way of breast enlargement nowadays. And or at the end, what we'll end, learn at the end of the day, maybe that uh, it would be advisable to wait with aesthetic breast surgery and choose to undergo such operation after family planning where we did and conducted our preliminary search in three databases with the search key below. Also find some very nice articles. There is a previous meta-analysis in the team, but it has a very, very, very small population, and it doesn't really derive it into subgroups, uh, and doesn't really compare uh, these kind of uh, uh, operations next to each other. But luckily, don't, uh, don't be scared, we have a lot of new uh, articles with very, very strong uh, populations. Uh, millions of patients were, yes. So in summary, we would like to improve women's life, women's everyday life with these uh, uh, researchers. And never forget to infinity, infinity and beyond. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. May I, may I answer some questions? Thank you. I am Benjamin Schrebeck again. Uh, I, according to your first project, yes. uh, how would you like to measure the patient satisfaction? Let's get back to it. I'm going to answer it by showing you. So most of these, especially the new articles, are, uh, are using some scales, which are the female sexual function index, female genital self-image index, and the four-point response scale. So we are using these kind of scales uh, in these articles to decide if the patient was satisfaction, uh, so, uh, so, so the patient was pleased with the operation or not. And we are putting the complication rate next to it. And with, the, with, with these informations, with, with these data, we can decide which is the better way of, uh, of uh, this kind of uh, alteration of the outer genital ear. Congrats for the presentation again. Uh, I just like to ask a question uh, regarding your second topic. Uh, in your background, you're told about only breast augmentation. I'm just curious. After your PICO, it seems that you like to work with all kinds of uh, breast surgeries. Will you include as well breast reduction surgeries, which uh, are of course come with the no. Uh, we will we will we will exclude it. We will exclude it. We will only concentrate mostly on these aesthetic breast surgery of augmentations, because. The articles we can use are mostly about that, unfortunately. So with reduction, we, we cannot... But to be honest, uh, 
breast reduction surgeries are, uh, are not so common in this age. So breast reduction surgeries, of course they happen, but they're mostly, mostly, peop, uh, mostly women are seeking that kind of surgeries after childbirth, after family planning, mostly. So it hardens or, or, or way to find articles like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And just a remark, Michi, uh, uh, um, to Marco's uh, question. That would be also interesting to, to examine this question because uh, also those patients who deliver the baby and then they had a reduction, uh, breast reduction surgery, of course, they may have more children after that. And the, we should awesome. uh, also investigate the impact either uh, in this project or at another one, but this is also a very interesting question. It can be another project maybe, yes. Yes, yes. the third one. The third okay. one, exactly. Thank you.